So once again, because I'm recording now, I'm Joyce Brown, and I'm very excited to be here with you all. And I'd like to thank the Okotoks Art Council for inviting me to come and share a craft and an art with you. This virtual culture is organized by Jamie Brett with the Culture, Heritage and Education and Public Programs. And it is a monthly series. So hopefully you tell your friends and everybody joins in. And we have lots of people joining from month to month. So today we are doing a sandpaper art and we will be making it into a pillow. So you'll be decorating your piece today with the crayon art on the sandpaper. And then in two weeks, we'll sew it together when you have a chance to get it all done. So just to go over the supplies that you need, I'm gonna change the camera angle. And what you need for this is you need sandpaper, you need wax crayons, you're going to need some fabric that will cover your cushion and pull the cushion out. You won't need this till the next class. But if you bought the kit, you'll have a little cushion like this. It looks like this that gets stuck in and we'll be working on our piece of fabric and decorating it today. So you'll also need a pad with some newspaper and then some clear paper so you don't get the newsprint on your piece and you'll need an iron. And that will be it at the end of the class. So when you are ironing, do be in a well ventilated area. So to start with, we're gonna set everything aside and you're going to work on coloring a picture. So some that I've done is you can, I did just a free drawing of a boat getting ready to go skiing out in the, on the lake. I did a pond with wildflowers, more of an abstracted one. You can choose what you want to do. You can draw lines. And I've just been taking a pencil and a ruler and drawing some shapes in this one. And you can set my package of, here's the package of sandpaper that we're using. You can use any size grit that you have of, of sandpaper. The coarser it is, the further apart the dots of color will be. And the finer the grit, you'll get a more complete picture. So now we're going to start with your sandpaper and your crayons and your pencil. If you want to draw any lines. And the pencil won't show up because it does not have the dye in it that you do in the crayons. So these can just be here as guidelines and not be part of. If you want the black lines to show, you would then have to take your black crayon and color with them. So we're gonna take, the crayons are going to get broken and munched up because you will be pushing hard on this. And you can go straight down. And the more you put on, the more color, the more dye will come off. So I like 
to make it nice and solid. And coloring in the whole piece. So I hope you're all on, ready to be coloring with me. You can draw your own picture if you'd like. Such a beautiful day out today. You could be coloring a nice outdoor scene, getting ready to go out. So you can use the front end of your crayon and pushing down. Or if you peel off the paper off your crayon, you can use the side and get a whole different type of effect. It doesn't go quite as dark, but you can get, if you want to cover a whole area loosely, you know, try not to bend your paper. And so then there's lots of white spots. So then you could take another color and come in and add more colors to get some shading in with your piece. If you leave spaces, so if I didn't color this one and then I colored out here and out here, this piece would remain whatever your background color is. So you might want to think about, do you want your whole pillowcase covered in crayon? Or do you want to leave some white colors, some of your background? So in this case, we do, if you got the kit, you do have a white piece of fabric. This fabric is um, a prepared for dyeing fabric. So that means it has no sizing or anything in it. So it will absorb the wax, the dye from the wax crayons even better into the fabric. You're going to continue coloring on your piece. Deciding if you want the whole thing, if you only want it to do a smaller piece, you could cut your cardboard into the size that you would like it. So coming in, and then you do have to come in afterwards as the crayons get worn down and peel off your, your paper. Now I did just buy a Play-Doh crayon. This is from the dollar store and it works perfectly fine. You do get lots of color coming through. There's my pond and all my reflections and trees growing up. And you can, so you don't have to worry about having anything really expensive wax crayons to do this project, whatever you have. Often people have lots of crayons in their homes and using up your scraps is a good use for this class. You can see that in here, this is where it's the sandpaper and you can see how you get the nice texture of the dots coming through and the thicker you put it on, the more will come off onto your fabric. Later on, you can actually color right onto your fabric if you want it all colored, or you can do more pieces. Once 
this is the one I used. Once you have put it on, there still is color in the sandpaper, but you have taken the dye out of it. So even heating it again, if you want to get more color and do it again, then you would need to go back in and color again on your piece. And that is perfectly acceptable. You can use your same coloring design a few times. It's nice to come in and scatter your colors and work on getting some shading. In water, you often get darker colors in the middle, but the colors seem to move around. You get a shallower bottom so the water can come up and looks, looks a little darker where the bottom is deep. So you could do that. You often get some reflections in water. So some of the colors that you're using around for your land, you can add in even some of the greens. This one is looking at more of a Monet style, a very abstract without drawing out the exact little flowers and, and water exactly, but trying more to keep it blurry and very abstract. And once your crayons get small, they'll break and then you can turn them over and do them on the side if you want. And on this one, it's hard to see exactly where you've been. So it's better to go over a few times because if you were wanting to use your same piece and do your picture, say you want the same picture on both sides of your pillow, then you'll need to redraw it on both. So on this one, I have my sort of Lake and Monet. And on this side, I put a path leading up into a house in the forest with all the trees coming out. And it's all works. You can, because you do have two sides of your pillow, it's good to make them in different colors. So this one has some purple in and blues and greens. I think I was into the green mode here, into nature, because the sun is starting to shine so much. I'm going to give you a little bit longer to continue coloring. And you can decide whether you're doing an actual picture or whether you're drawing lines and just coloring in your lines. I like to go back over and really get in so there's lots of dye and crayon on it. You can do just stripes. Definitely push hard.
once again, I'm going as dark as I can, and I am peeling off the paper and getting right down in and getting it nice and dark. I can see what happens on this one if I outline it all in the black. Just have fun with the whole piece. Continue on with your color. Going as dark as you can. Because you do want it to show up on your fabric. Now this isn't a good craft for keeping clean fingernail because you got to get right in, peel this paper off. You could use a knife if your fingernails can't get in. But while you're doing this, you could think in, about colors and what colors go together and what looks good together. So the oranges and the reds are beside each other on the color wheel. And then the blue is a complementary color to the orange. So the contrast in blue and orange makes it really pop. Blue and orange is the only complementary set of colors that don't get a holiday for it. So some of the other complementary colors, the sets are purple, and yellow. And you all know what holiday purple and yellow represent? You're right, it's Easter. And then I think the most famous set of complementary colors are one of the favorite holidays that everybody has. One of the colors are red. And can you guess the other color? You're right, it's green. And that's our Christmas colors. So while you're coloring, it's always good to think about how the colors go together. We do start off with three primary colors. And these are the basics and you can mix all your primary colors. If you had that in paint, you could use them and make every other color. And the three primary colors are red and yellow and blue. And if we took, we'll see if it'll work with crayons. If we took yellow and mixed red in with it, letting it sit on top again, 
we get orange. So there's two of them. Then if we took our red and our blue, and we mixed the blue with that red, have to do it really lightly. We would get purple. And our last two, if we took blue, better take the yellow first, it's the lighter one. Crayons don't mix very well. We just are laying one color on top of the other one very lightly and hoping that something will shine up. So if we take our yellow, and added blue to it. We would get green. So here are three primaries. And here are our three secondary colors. And from there, if you add black to them, you get some shades. And if you add whites to them, we get some tints. And so lots of our colors, so this is probably our middle green and here's probably our so if we haven't well, we had this one as our middle orange if you added blacks to it you'd get them darker and if you added white to it they would go lighter now yellow is a special color because it is so light, it's hard to go very much lighter with yellow. But the more you add, you can go darker a lot. And there's lots of different shades getting darker and darker. Red, Here's the red, that one there is quite pink, dark pink, so just a little bit of white added. And then here's more white added. And oranges and reds, if you keep going, adding black to them, you're gonna soon get your browns. So I'm just giving you a little bit of color while you're coloring your picture and getting ready to iron it and get it all done because we want our whole sheet covered in crayon. And the last one that we look at, if we have black and white, there we have black, white, and if we added black to it, you're right, we're going to get grays. And our grays are going to be lighter and darker, depending on how much blacks and white in are in it.
So it's fun to color, but it's fun also to think about what colors look good together and why they look good together. And if you can put colors over if you want. So you can see in this gray, as I color it, there's little, oops, sorry, there's little streaks of black showing. And that's because gray is made up of black and white. So how are your pictures coming? I hope you're fun doing a masterpiece. And I hope that there's some spot that you can share them with everybody afterwards. Always good to see what others do and how you can make yours different the next time and make it uniquely your own. So here we had our purple and our red and blue making purple. So if I add the yellow to it, I'll be putting the complementary color beside it. And here I had the orange and the red and yellow making the orange. And if I take a blue, I'll be adding the orange is complementary. So painters, drawers, they all need to think an awful lot about color. But also what I love to do is quilt and make fiber pieces. And color is very important in that too. Sometimes just like what we're doing with this sandpaper, I have to make my colors because I can't find exactly what I want. So here we had our blue and yellow that was making our green. And to add our complementary color, I'll put the red in beside it. Basically on this sheet, I am just filling in the squares. So when it comes time to iron it, it will mostly be filled in. I think I'll leave a few of them white so you can see how that looks. I'll finish this block. How are your pictures coming? Almost done. They're all doing a fabulous job. Remember, the more you put on and the harder you push, the more will come off of the dye. The wax isn't going to come off. It's going to get lost into our newspaper and our other sheets of paper. Our pillow is not going to be hard. And but all the dye from the crayons is going to come. That's why when you stick it on tables, or walls, it's not such a good idea because it's hard to get the dye out. So here I have orange. So let's try a different shade of blue and let's see how it looks. Peel down my paper some more.
I think we need to make a new holiday that has blue and orange in it. We have no colors for the long weekend for next weekend. Maybe we should make it blue and orange. I think they look quite striking together. And we'll finish in here. And we'll finish a little bit at this end. And then we'll start looking at the next step. What haven't I used? always fun to put on a color and decide what colors made it up because this one is a very light blue but it looks like it has a little bit a little bit of yellow added to make give it a greenish tinge but it also looks like it has an awful lot of white in it And brown, even though brown is what you get when you go really dark with red and orange, lots of times if you mix all your colors together, you get brown. What are the... Color of earth, of dirt going out and playing. Okay. Tips of crayons are definitely more breakable than the middles. a couple more squares and call this one good so I'm going to pick up my crayons and move them out of the way garbage that I had so I'm working on an older table so it my craft table so I haven't worried about keeping it nice but if you are working at your good table you should have it covered and if you're happy and I did a little bit of coloring over again on this one so we're going to see how much comes off of it again as well I'm going to set this aside, set all these things aside. And I'm pulling in, so I have an iron, and this is an old iron. I've had it for a long time. If you only have one iron in your house, just make certain that the iron does not come in contact with the crayon. So I've protected my table. I put down a towel and I fold it in half, nice and heavy, so the heat won't go through. Then I've put down quite a few layers of newspaper. And then in your kit, if you got a kit, I gave you some 
just light brown paper. Because the ink in newspapers can come off and you don't want it on your iron and you don't also want probably want all the black lines onto your pillow. So you're going to plug in your iron and I have it turned up basically as hot as it goes because we all we have to do is we have to allow the crayon to melt. And now if you do have the piece on one side, right in the middle, and I left my crease in, I ironed yours out, and your sides have been stitched if you have the kit, and that way it'll make it so it won't fray because you can see how fabric if nothing happens on the edges, all the little strings can come out and that's called fraying. So in the middle and towards the front, fray is the back, but this is gonna be the middle of my pillow because my pillow is gonna be folded in thirds, basically like this, and it's all gonna come in and you'll be stuffing it. So if you have your own fabric and it has a seam down the middle, give it a little press to take that seam out. And because I'm using my craft iron, even if it's a craft iron, I still don't wanna try and get crayon and things into it because I never know what I'm gonna use it for next. But if that does happen, then I can always clean it off by rubbing it and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to take one of my pieces and I think I'll take this one and I'm going to put it basically in the center. And I think this one I'm gonna go up and down. You could do it sideways if you wanted. It's your choice. I'm gonna take my second piece of paper. I'm gonna roll up the fabric so it's out of the way. I'm gonna take the second piece of paper and I'm gonna fold it over so all of that crayon is inside. Take my iron and it's slowly, I'm moving it. Now you can start to see little dots and that's the wax. You could Put it on and count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then move it around and let it count to 10 again. Because you're having to heat through the paper, through the back of your sandpaper, and then melt the crayon wax on the front. So the dye will run out and go into the fabric. So we're going slowly around, holding the iron for about the count of 10. Now this is best to do in a well ventilated place. So if you can do it outside, if it's a nice day, I'm in my back porch so I can have the door open because melting wax isn't good for you to smell over long periods. And it can also stink up your house quite a bit if you don't. So along the edges, you can see that the wax where the crayon is, it's seeped around the side. So I've been through quite a bit of it. So I'm gonna let it cool. And when it's cool enough to touch, I can just lift off the paper. And here you can see all the wax that's melted through. And you can see even a little bit where it's come and run out. Now I just want to hold my hand on it and I want to lift it. And I want to make certain that I've got it coming evenly 
and that it's looking like it's well the dye has come out so it looks like there's a little bit in here so if I'm holding it when I put it back down I'm not moving it but if I just whip it right off I'll never get it back and so if I've held it lifted a corner looked lifted a corner from another side and looked and I decide it needs some more ironing I can just lay the paper back down on top and give it a little bit more. Now this one is, was pretty much done, so I'm not gonna give it too much more. So parents, if you have younger kids, you may want to help them with this part because you don't want any burns. Set my iron aside. I'm going to peel it off and now I am going to lift up the whole piece and you can see that my design has been moved right over. Now let's, so one piece, as you can see in the pillowcase, one piece gets folded right under a third of it. So I don't have to do anything on this because it's not ever going to be seen. But I do have a front and a back. And if I want to put something on the back, I can do that. So then I can move. Actually, let's go the other way. So it's the extra is hanging off. And let's take the one that I just partially colored. I just did a little bit here and there on it. And I want to show you what happens with where I've already ironed it and I didn't add any more crayon. So I'm just going to lay it down. And you can see that it's been done once before. And you can see that the wax has come through. And if your iron was right on this, this wax which isn't a lot, but it is some would go on to your iron. And so having an extra piece of paper protects your iron and the bottom piece of paper protects your fabric from the newspaper. So untangle my iron cord. I want to be careful with that. And we're going to go back on making certain that we give it enough time to heat up the paper and the sandpaper and then melt the wax, which will move the dye into the fabric. So lots of things are going on in this. And you can see there's a few more pieces of wax pointing through so it is starting to melt. So this is one of my really old irons that I just kept as a crafting iron. But you also might want to just go to the, one of the second-hand stores and quite often salvage center they'll have an old iron for about five dollars and really you for a lot of this you don't want to be able to have steam or put water in it you just want to dry heat And we'll set it down and we'll take a little look. So this one, I'm just going to peel it off because it wasn't all done anyways. And there you can see I colored an awful lot of the water and I'd throw in a few little bit, but nothing else. There was no dye left to show anything else. So if you are doing pieces and you want to cover the whole thing, you can then go back and color some more and you can 
or you can color a brand new one or you can continue and you can keep coloring and ironing and getting it all to look like sandpaper or you can take some crayons and you can do some coloring right on now using the side of your crayon you can get a nice wide look you can get it not so dark that way you can go over you can see which side i put more pressure on but you can show now i'm putting the wax and the dye in here so i don't want wax in my finished piece so i'm if you're doing if you have a lot and it's very dark you're going to want to put newspaper over and then well we'll put this and then the newspaper because we don't want the black but i want you to see what happens so i'm not going to put the newspaper on And even though I've done a very, very, very light, you can see that some of the wax is coming out and coming onto the paper. And even when you finish your pieces that you didn't color directly on, you can see it's a little bit stiff and that's because some of the wax is going in. And here you can see the wax going down. And that's why you want newspaper on top of your towel because you don't want your wax into your towel and i do use towels but old towels so on here i took the dye out but some of the wax moved with it so normally i would have newspaper on top because you can see all this wax coming out and so that wax is coming on to my iron right now. And if I had more level layers of newspaper on top, it will protect my iron. And if the wax is still coming out move your paper if you see it in your newspaper pick it up and move it a little bit because you want to take the wax out of this you want to make it soft and gentle so when you put your head on your pillow and i would keep doing this until I didn't see any more wax coming out. So you don't have to go over it for a little while. When you are finished and you look at it, you'll find, I have to let it cool off a little, give it a shake, lift it up from the fabric, but you will find it's soft. Again, it, the wax would hold it all out. And in here in this one, you can see all the time. If you go back to it, you can look at how blending colors worked here, the red and the blue. You can actually see where the red and the blue are separate. And then here's the purple with it. The red and the yellow got quite orangey. So it does depend on your wax crayons and how much you can get them. And with the dyeing or the heating of it, does allow some of the dyes to move together. Um, if I had bigger blobs, and so if you had a bigger grit sandpaper, you would end up with bigger blobs and you get bigger bobbies. Finer, you can get the more delicate, fine pieces. And then you can even get more delicate by just coloring on the fabric and then taking all the wax out. So the rest of today, or before the next class, what we'd like is for you to have the back third colored and the front third 
colored as much. Now, if you want to leave a white piece around it, that's perfectly fine. White makes things pop out. So you can leave as much as you want. And the back piece, you're going to leave totally plain because that's going to be put under. And next time when we get together, I'm going to show you how we can stitch it together and put our pillow inside. And I'm also going to show you a few more things that you can use with using the crayon on the sandpaper on fabric. So when you are done with your ironing, then you want to clean your iron. And I go, I can go on to my newspaper if I think it has an awful lot and really rub on that. Then I go to a clean piece of paper and I rub on that to make certain that nothing is coming off my iron. And when nothing is, I know it's clean. I'm then going to unplug it and set some sorry. I had that turned off. Then we're going to set it someplace that it will cool safely and nobody will burn themselves. So I hope you had fun doing your coloring on your fabric. And I hope you will join me in two weeks to finish off your project. And I once again want to really thank the Okotoks Art Council for inviting me to be the artist. I am Joyce Brown and I do fiber art, which I love. And do watch because Jamie Brett is bringing in new artists every month that you can see through the culture and heritage education and public programs through Okotoks. And this virtual cultural series is run monthly hosted by different artists. And it's a great way for people to have something to do in this time of lockdown. Who knows when we're gonna get out of it. I do hear that in High River, there's a rodeo happening with no participants allowed, no spectators allowed to come. So this is something that you can do. And when we can get together, you could have a number of you get together and make your own projects. So thank you once again. I'm just checking to see if there are any questions. And I don't see any questions. So hopefully one hour of talking was enough talking to explain everything thoroughly. So thank you very much. And you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all at 10 o'clock on the last Saturday this month. So in two weeks, that must be the 28th. So take care.